you explain a little bit more what Maker Hub is and what your role is? Um, yeah, so we're an initiative that's on the campus. Um, so basically what we do is we try to bring new technologies to uh, students so that they can get like a different learning experience on campus uh, rather than like your traditional rather than your traditional um, you know like look inside a textbook or googling stuff like it's very hands-on um, so we do 3d printing we do circuitry uh, so we work with like raspberry pis arduinos things like that and raspberry pi yeah so like these are all right so like a raspberry pi and um, arduino it's like a motherboard um, okay. and you can like plug in yeah, wires can, to like, it you can program stuff and yeah. make it so like an Arduino is more like um, electrical engineering. So basically what you do with that is that, uh, you know, you kind of, uh, you know, make a circuit essentially. Um, and then also the Raspberry Pi has a CPU in it. So you can actually run computing stuff on it. So uh, you put like an interface on it and uh, it acts as a computer. Mm -hmm. And how did you find yourself at Maker Hub? Um, so I'm actually a former student here at Baruch and Ooh, uh, alumni. yeah, uh, so basically um, I transferred here and the first class that I um, basically selected was a special topics class. So I wasn't really sure what I was getting myself into. So from there, um, you know, I found out that I was like working with 3D printers and everything. Um, so actually the three professors that started was Professor Samuel Lerner. Um, she's in the Center for Teaching and Learning right now. Um, Professor Monica Dean, she went to a different college, and then uh, Zoe Sheehan Zaldana. Um, so they were kind of like my influencers uh, mm -hmm. for the class. Um, and being that like I have like a builder background, uh, I gravitated towards the, you know, the work that we were doing. So from there, they asked me if I wanted to do an internship. So I was like, all right, why? Like it just made perfect sense. Like mm -hmm. why wouldn't I want to do that? Um, you know, new technologies that are kind of like and change the world right, so right. from there sure. um yeah so i like nailed the interview process on, uh, <laughs> you know on that i made sure that like i was selected like i went kind of like outside of the you know the realm of like what they were asking for so yeah now, that's kind of like are. how i am yeah um so now i am uh someone called me the the chief maker but uh basically like a technology specialist Essentially, yeah. What kind of building were you doing before? Uh, so, like, I have like a art background. So, okay, like, cool. I was doing like sculptures and everything. Yeah, very cool. um, but I was also going to Parsons prior to Brew, so okay. I was doing uh, product design. Oh wow! So, yeah, so I did like weird, interesting things, like uh, kind of like redesigning the crosswalks in New right. York City because nice. it's kind of like a data technology. Yeah. But yeah, um, so that kind of led me to doing the three D printing, and it was kind of seamless. So you found like a. Uh, kind of like a connection yes yes yeah. yes yeah like i kind of Creating. felt like a fish out of water when i was here at baruch right. um because uh, a lot of type a personalities yeah, i would say but i don't know if there's anything here, wrong with that know, but <laughs> here for like more accounting yeah, marketing yeah. business um, whereas like i'm more of like a laid back type of person you know? yeah kinda yeah like, for sure kind of yeah. like water you know have no <laughs> shape kind of just flow um yeah, that's so. very cool. But I feel like technology, you know, especially 3D printing is shaping business now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's such a great opportunity to join 3D yeah. printing and um, even like computer science because, you know, now I feel like we're having AI take over yeah, as well. Yeah, basically. I mean, I kind of feel like we're like, I'd call it like a golden period for technology at the mm -hmm. moment because I've like I would attribute it to uh, like uh, the Great Recession, or mm -hmm. yeah, Great Recession that we just had in like 2008. So like a lot of businesses were investing in like new technology. So like a lot of the stuff was you know came about because of that. So I mean a blessing in disguise, I guess if you want to call it that. For sure. Um, whereas like you know I would say probably prior to that like um, you know and then we also had like the tech bubble things like that so mm -hmm. it kind of plateaued right now but uh mm -hmm. that definitely was kind of like uh fueling it mm -hmm. it's also going to make people a lot more independent that too that's going to be the... and it's going to speed up things right. as well like it's right. going to make uh you know what we do um you know a lot faster yeah so like yeah, the turnaround so... time on things is just going to be quick right yeah. yeah yeah and you're seeing now like emerging trends with like 3d printing that recently i was looking 
and I saw that they 3D printed a car, they 3D print instruments. Especially um, like 3D printing organs, which is Yeah, pretty, organs. Yeah. It's in like every yeah, so industry. Clemson University did the mm. liver, or right. I believe it was a liver. Right. Um, so, I mean, they haven't been able to like test it in the body because like your body, you yeah. know, has like a stress, yeah. um, like Immune. pressures and everything. Yeah. Um, but what they do is they do like, uh, they'll test like, um, medication on it right, like that. Right, right. so yeah so you have like interesting things like you know organic material being mm. printed which mm. is really like groundbreaking yeah because sure. then it's like organ donors like you don't have to wait on the yeah. line yeah right. yeah you that's gonna save so many lives hit a button yeah, yeah and it's like it's printed yeah that's yeah. where is it emerging the most like what industry would you say do you know um i would call 3d printing um disruptor like it's wow, basically was actually disrupt- saying that yeah, saying yeah it's so like, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's like basically hitting everything like it's not just like one area like um don't think of it as like so much uh you know like this thing of like 3d printing is like being new it's more like the process that um it goes through to make the object um so like you can kind of apply that process to anything uh, like you know you could do it to food not you know it won't cook it but it will like prep the food for you so think of like having like a third arm in a way and it's kind of like helping you move a little quicker or make a third arm exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, so there's a lot of prosthetics that are being right right absolutely yeah so, i've been reading yeah so it, it helps with that um like even you know so if like you have like one leg like they right. they have like algorithms where they can kind of mimic what your uh, leg would be like if mm-hmm. you have one yeah. So, yeah yeah can you like how long does it um well i know that to 3d print something it takes it depends on like how big it is right yeah, and, right. and like the, the, the bigger project, it is yeah, the yeah, project yeah. then it takes longer and sometimes like there will be mistakes and then you have to reprint the entire thing again can you like we don't want mistakes yeah. <laughs> we don't deal mistakes. with mistakes in our field <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I know. I can you like tell me like what programs you use and like uh, what um, you teach at your workshops and what's coming up soon? Yeah. Um, so basically, um, the so software was like a big issue because when we first started with the Maker Hub and we were teaching in classes, uh, we used a program that had a very large learning curve. Whereas like now we use a program called Tinkercad. Um, it's on the cloud, so you can use it anywhere, like you just, as long as you have an internet connection. Um, and it was actually made for first graders. Um, oh, wow. So <laughs> like, it's very user friendly. I'm totally qualified for that. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let's all go to Maker Hub right after this. Just... Yeah, so I mean like, I, like I could teach someone um, how to use it and you yeah. know, like within 30 minutes, what is it called? Connect. Tinker? Tinkercad. Okay. Like you're tinkering with an object because they yeah, give you like pre- pre-existing shapes. And the templates. Yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. And you kind of like work off of that. Whereas like some of the other programs, like you really have to build stuff yeah, from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be a little cumbersome, yeah. you know. And I, I would say like you need a little bit more of like a, you know, math background for yeah. that. Because yeah. it's a lot of like, you know, diameters, yeah, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and like angles, things like that. Wow. So, yeah, if you pass the... Uh, what is it like, Matt B? Yeah, then you're all right. Okay, never mind. I'm screwed. <laughs> and I saw that you guys uh, also do things with like VR, and you also have like an artathon. Can you like tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um. So on April twelfth, uh, there's an artathon that's going on. So it's school wide. Um. So basically, the dean, uh, Dean Romero, he is like an issue that he started in the school, and basically just wants to expose to you know the students to everything that's going on around the school and also kind of have like art and be an influencer a little bit, um, kind of brighten everyone's day a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to be doing a VR experience there. Um, nothing like too crazy because uh, our, we're just kind of like st- stepping into VR right now. Um, okay. It's like that is a, a little more complicated than like mm-hmm. 3D printing. Like there are probably some uh, overlapping similarities that you can use like in the design process, but like it's a beast uh, of its own you know mm-hmm. so um yeah so basically like you know people are just going to come down and have like a like a really quick um experience with uh vr that's it what well, is it similar to the one you did with the racing car no so the one that we did in the beginning of the semester yeah. that was actually uh 
someone who also went to Baruch. Oh, okay. um, and basically he made his own company where he uh, used the Oculus Rift. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we had like racing going on on the yeah, first yeah. floor, uh, which we might be doing in the fall. Uh, nice. How yeah. do you race with like so VR, like a VR headset? So like, ima imagine like a video game. Yeah. Okay. Like, so instead of like playing with a controller, like you're literally um, immersed into it. Like you have a headset on and- And you're like racing. It's like yeah. multiplayer. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's very much like the arcade games. Yeah. Yeah. Ready, like player ready Player One. Ready Player One. There's a plug right there. Yeah, we're kind of going in that direction. For sure, wow. And there's another event, right? That's coming up. Yeah, so we also that? have um, a circuitry. Um, workshop that's coming up, which is on April 24th. Uh, so basically, you'll be able to make circuits with that. So you'll learn about sensors, and then also like, you know, some electric stuff. Do you guys work with processing at all? Processing? Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. OK, OK. <laughs> What's processing? Wait, it's Can a software. Uh, so basically, uh, processing is a software that I'm learning in my new media class. Mm -hmm. So basically, you can like code stuff, and you can hook it up to Arduino and make it like make a Simple lighting, you know, like, like a like a lighting lamp. pattern. I mean, yeah, pattern yeah, like, like, kind of yeah, like um, okay. how Christmas lights work. Right, you can like right. program like what sequence of lights mm -hmm. will go, in. or like you could even make visualizers. Yes, yes, yes. I I, I've been actually working on that a music visualizer using like coding, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, when like that's a little advanced I, I for guess, like yeah. what people are You're in, right. in Baruch, right. uh, mm -hmm. just the, um, the nature of it, but like. We have people who on our our team who do stuff like that. So mm -hmm. if like a student was to come up and ask questions about that, like they could definitely help. Cool, cool. Wow. And also, I was wondering, um, what what do uh, students usually make at your workshops, or like what were some like previous projects students have made before? Yeah. So um, our last workshop was a print. 3D print, yeah, 3D print a cell phone case. So students were able to come in and basically like go to town and like make whatever they wanted to make for their cell phones, um, put like a custom made design on it, things like that. Nice. Um, so that was our last workshop. Well, like I said, we'll definitely be doing a lot of this stuff in the fall. So anyone who's interested okay. could definitely come by. Um, it's all for Baruch students and bring your laptop <laughs> if you can. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so that, uh, so for our workshops, like that's one of the things that people have made, uh, like cell phone cases. We've also worked with uh, Professor Greer, who's in um, a bio teacher. So like, basically, kind of like prototyping uh, medical devices. Uh, so like, we've had numerous things where like, you know, people are making like arm splints, things like that. Like, cool. it's just like, it's a whole bunch of different things, um, like pill dissolvers. Uh, like using 3D printing? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. I, well, I mean, it's more, um, it's more of like a model mm. rather than mm. like an actual mm. like pill that dissolves. But um, you know, like uh, you know, the FDA in like 2015 they um, approved mm. like for medication to be printed. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's gonna that's gonna change the pharmaceutical industry mm. yeah. big mm -hmm. time. Wow. Yeah. So. That's gonna. I actually attended one of their workshops. It was like my first semester here, uh -huh. like I transferred here. And I remember um, the, someone made a video game, just like like he was saying with Ardu Arduino. Um, uh -huh. I don't know, He I think he coded or something and there was like a joystick and you, you, you're you actually playing the game, like a mini monitor in front of you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so he actually he used the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi, yeah, yeah, exactly. But he also, yeah, yeah. Um, he like made the casing for it yeah, out of three D yeah. printing. Yeah. So like you can like bundle the two. Like it's kind of like the way to go if you want to make. Do yeah. you guys collaborate with them too? Yeah. Um, so basically, like for entrepreneurs that come in, um, it gives them a chance to basically like you know their wildest dreams, whatever they came up with, mm -hmm. like have it come to fruition. Um, so you know, uh, yeah, they can kind of like do whatever they want. You know, they get they get a chance to experiment and test out their ideas. Um, like there, there, you'd be surprised like how many people have ideas, but they actually like don't know about us. So, right, um, right, right, so right, like right. we don't get too many people that come in randomly and are just like, I want to make this. Um, it's more like you know we're working with the professors, things like that, because um, it just, it has a greater impact for us. Because um, like like I said, like this is more of a business school, so it's like more people going for like counting things like that. So you know there's like 
creative. Being an, yeah, like yeah. being creative and like creating something from scratch is not like too much on their mind, you know. Yeah. And then just the nature of like college students and the you know, it's not like we have like a we're all stuck on campus. Like it's a commuter school, so like people you know come here from all over. Um, so they don't really stay on campus. So that's like another issue that we have with like people you know, being entrepreneurs, like, they kind of just come here and then go back home, you know, mm -hmm. whereas, like, if we're all stuck up on the campus, then it's, like, you what gotta, else, you, yeah, yeah, like, what you else guys, are you going to do? You got to start, so. yeah. How, so, when professors come to you, what, uh, how do you work with them, or, like, what do they propose to you, and um, how do they teach their students yeah. um, about you guys? Um, so, basically, how that process works is that we have a professor who's a mentor who kind of like hovers over us and um, they kind of do all the, the talking between us and the professors. So basically like a professor that has an idea for a class. Um, so Professor Romy Kerr, he's the one mm -hmm. that um, is kind of mentoring us. Uh, we also have Professor Sheehan. Um, so basically they would talk with the professor and kind of like give them an idea of like what we're capable of and kind of work it into their curriculum. Um, <clears throat> so from there, basically like a professor would have an idea and then they would pitch it to Professor Kerr and then from there, you know, they would discuss whether or not it's feasible or not. What, um, what about students? If, if, for instance, I had an idea, mm -hmm. like if I just come in, right? Like what are the like prerequisites or something like that? Um, so you have two options. You can either just walk right into the field center and ask for the Maker Hub. Mm -hmm. um, we also have consulting hours on... Wednesdays oh, from cool. 1 to 4 okay. in the library building, room uh, 617. Six, okay. Six, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where the six computer dash, labs are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, basically, when you come in the computer lab, it's all the way to the left uh -huh. in the back. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so they can just come in and basically you know, ask for some money from the Maker Hub team. And like I said, like we have a pretty diverse team. Uh, like I would say like I have more of a builder background. We have somebody who's a coder. Um, mm -hmm. And we have somebody who has like electrical engineering background. So mm -hmm. like the trio is kind of like, you know, working together to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, help whoever right, comes right. in. Because it might be, you know, there's portions from like all of our, you know, all of our backgrounds yeah, that would yeah. help. So. Uh, yeah, so like, you know, we have a pretty, pretty strong team, I would say. Nice, nice. Yeah.